Hi, my name is Vivek and I lead the AI team at Dolby. So in the last 10 years, we have had great success in applying deep learning to audio, but I'm more excited about the fact that this is just the beginning of what's possible. I plan to go over some of the challenges of using deep learning for audio, recent breakthroughs, and some applications we are working on. I hope after the presentation, you'll find yourself curious about audio AI. Before I go into the rest of my presentation, I wanted to acknowledge how helpful PyTorch has been in our journey. My team loves it because it's easy to use. Dynamic graphs make it easy to iterate over architectures. And the support is excellent. In the rare case, we found a bug. The patch we provided was merged in days. More personally, my framework of choice used to be Torch. But when PyTorch came along, I ended up learning Python just so that I could use PyTorch. That's me. I'm really glad I did that. Also wanted to give a quick shout out to the Speech Print project, which Dolby is sponsoring. The team in Mila is developing a deal kit, which will simplify doing speech research on top of PyTorch. Check out their website for details. Here's a brief history of Dolby's innovation in the audio space. For over 50 years, we have created solutions which enhance the audio experience, starting with noise reduction in the 60s to creating technologies like Dolby Digital Plus and Dolby Atmos, which are now standards for high-quality audio. There are over 11 billion devices with Dolby Audio. Anytime you're listening to high-quality audio, you're likely using Dolby's technology. And in the last few years, as deep learning is fundamentally changing how audio processing is done, we are combining our audio expertise to create new state-of-the-art technologies. Talking about challenges, a significant strength of deep learning is to work with raw samples without any handcrafted features. But this gets very challenging with audio. The first difficulty is dimensions. Consider a 64 by 64 pixel image. It contains a lot of information. You can identify the celebrity, guess their age, gender, ethnicity. But equivalent bytes of uncompressed audio is just enough for one word. Secondly, audio has a structure at multiple time scales, ranging from the scales of milliseconds to minutes. Each sample of audio is dependent on the sample preceding it, but on a larger time scale is also dependent on the note being played or the phoneme being spoken. Modeling all these temporal dependencies becomes challenging. Thirdly, perception. Which of these sound different? In audio, perception matters a lot. Even though these waveforms look very different, they sound exactly the same. In most deep learning applications, L1 or L2 losses are usually good enough, but they're very brittle when it comes to audio. Things like phase shift, alignment errors, or clock drifts make this measure completely break down. So to deal with these challenges, there are two basic approaches. One is to use spectrogram-based representation so that audio is transformed into an image-like representation, and we can use image-inspired networks. The other option is to use networks designed specifically for audio, which is what I'm going to focus on in the next few slides. Three years ago, there was a breakthrough in speech generation or audio generation. Two audio regressive models were developed which generated audio on a sample-by-sample -sample basis. Both these models use slightly different approaches. WaveNet used dilated convolution, whereas sample RNN from Mila used a multi-rate RNN. But what's important here is that both these architectures were designed specifically for audio and handled the high dimensionality and the multi-level temporal dependency of audio. More recently, we have had models like WaveRNN and WaveGlow, which also generate audio on a sample-by-sample -sample basis. All these models were able to achieve a naturalness, which was significantly better than all the prior approaches. In fact, these approaches were so powerful that they led to a breakthrough in speech coding. And by speech coding, I mean speech compression. In the last two years, both Google and Dolby have published works that drastically improve speech coding. While Google's focus has been on low bitrate, our focus has been on high-quality audio. Describing what we do in audio coding is always challenging. So I'm borrowing an analogy that our partners at Netflix used to describe video coding. She is Mary Kondo, the author of Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. She has a de decluttering show on Netflix. 
And the approach she uses for decluttering is to pick up each item and discard everything which does not give joy. And after you have discarded most of your possessions, she has a great method of folding everything into squares so that they can be efficiently packed. And we do something similar in speech coding. We analyze to identify what is essential, discarding everything else. Then we pack these bits in a way which is the most efficient. And on the decoder side, we unpack the bits and reconstruct the speech. This way of encoding decoding has been used for decades, but at really low bit rates, when we have discarded a lot of information, it's hard to synthesize speech, which is high quality. But now with deep learning, we have powerful generative models which can generate high quality speech, which is natural sounding, giving your joy back. Getting a bit deeper, the first tier of sample RNN is an MLP, which is, thus, which is then connected to a stack of GRU RNNs running at different time resolutions. The lowest layer is running on a sample resolution, whereas the topmost layer is running on a 10 millisecond or 160 sample resolution. The idea being that these RNNs focus on a different level of abstraction. Phoneme identity on the top, find details on the bottom. And this is the way it is able to manage the multi-level temporal dependency of audio. Without conditioning, sample RNN babbles, which is producing sounds which vaguely sound like speech, but does not make any sense. To control sample RNN, we condition it using quantized vocoder parameters from the bitstream. The bitstream is generated using an internal vocoder, which is able to capture the essence of speech at really low bit rate. If you're interested in learning more, we have a poster. Please check it out. Here are the listening test results. AMR wideband is the current state-of-the-art codec, which uh, sorry, AMR wideband is the current codec which is being used in our cell phones. Silk is the current state-of-the-art codec, which at lower bit rate is able to generate a quality better than AMR wideband. Our solution, sample R9, even at 6.4 kilobits per second, we were able to achieve a quality which was comparable or better than Silk at 16 kilobits per second. Just to give you an idea how significant this is, the last breakthrough which happened in speech coding was over 30 years ago when kelp came out. Kelp reduced the bit rate by approximately 20 to 30 percent. This is 2.5 times improvement. This function, this work, and similar work done by Google is the biggest step function speech coding has ever seen. Now, talking to, now let's talk about a completely different application. Voice conversion. So voice conversion is a technique where we can make somebody's speech sound like that of a target speecher. The way we achieve it was by using an architecture similar to audio coding. But instead of conditioning it on codec parameters, we condition it on content and target speaker embeddings. These target speaker embeddings end up learning the style of the target speaker, like how they pronounce their phonemes, their fundamental frequency, their accents. Our quality was much better than conventional voice conversion techniques, and the results were published in Interspeech 2018. Let me show you a quick demo. The first audio is the source speaker from which we would derive the content. The next is a target whose style we are trying to emulate. And finally, is a synthesized speech, which should sound like the target speech. So the input speech. Those who hold the property think so too. And so far, it is fortunate. The target. His flatteries delude, and his professions of affection gratify you. The synthesized speech. Those who hold the property think so too. And so far, it is fortunate. Amazing, isn't it? We are very excited about the potentials here. <laughs> so hopefully, this has provided some context on using deep learning for audio, some challenges, and some recent developments. And thank you, PyTorch, for being awesome partners along the way. Hopefully, I've inspired some of you to be more curious and excited about the work happening in this area. Personally, I'm really excited by the progress community has made. But I'm more amazed by the fact that this is just the beginning. And it's up to us to define where this technology takes us. Thank you. 
If you are interested in learning more, I will be hanging out next to our poster. Most of my team would be there as well. Also, feel free to contact me on Twitter.